This week on Behind the Music, we look at the record shop, the element that has been responsible for a lot of the dance hall and reggae culture. Now, back in the days, the record shop was where all selectors and sound systems and artists gathered to exchange ideals, to, you know, to vibe about new music, just to even find out what's going on back home in Jamaica. If it was that the, the record shop was not in Jamaica itself, it was the whole connection the roadway to what to the latest music and what was going on inside the industry now of course because of technology and so forth the record shop has become very almost non-existent i should say i'm here today in brixton london and i'm sitting next to supertone the owner of supertone records here in brixton london and maybe one of the last or very few surviving record shops throughout the world. Now, how long have, you know, you've been in business here? 30 years. 30 years. Yes, wow. And, and what are some of the great memories you have over 30 years of, of selling records in the no, same spot? Great memories. When I, when I started a record shop here, really in 1983, the record shop used to be full on a Saturday, Sunday, but now everything just gone down the hill through the downloading. The downloading that really technology. Mash, a technology really matched the business up. Let's let's talk about the you know the high days in the eighties. Yeah. You know, how much records would you sell on a on a Saturday afternoon? Well it man, it was used to three man working at the counter now it just went away really. Three man working yeah, at the, the counter. counter yeah. uh, and was it situations where you were running out of records and yeah, you had man, to tell people to come of, back yeah, next yeah, week yes. because that selection yeah, done? Yes, that's what it used to be. That's what it used yeah, to be. Jack Car Shop used to look like a dance hall on a Friday and a Saturday night. It was full, you know. Full of sound, man? Yeah, man, full of sound, man, Artists? and that kind of people, yeah. And those people would just hang out? And, yeah, just hang out and buy records. Now, it's, what yeah. time would you open up the doors? Well, I am always a, a late shop. I, I never really opened my shop before about 10 o'clock from them early days. I was the first late record shop in London. So, so you, and I always open about 10.30 until about 12 at night. Wow. And, and the crowd would just come constantly Yeah, man, in yeah because I was a late shop. So uh, when the people them go to work and things, we, we used to open my shop in a way that they could go to work, come home, have some food, and come out of the shop and buy two records. Because before that, when you used to have record shop, you used to close about 6, 6.30. And I said, well, that was not a good thing. What happened to the working man? He would have liked to buy two records as well. So I decided when I opened my shop in 1983, to open my shop about 10.30 in the day and close about 11, 12 in the night. Whatever time it lasts. Sometimes I'll have at 12 in there in those days. What, what were some of the top artists at that time where records used to sell very often for them? Well, you had all these people like Bob Marley, I must say, and Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaac. I have to call those man, right. because them man had all the top, top sellers. Sent out for record, and Freddie McGregor, and Alton Ellis, Wayne Gray. In those early days, got people used to buy a lot more sentimental music to Wayne Gray, Wilfred Edwards, and all them, man. They, used to sell plenty of records because the people them from Jamaica in those days, they just come up and them like those kind of sentimental records until we leave and go to dance all thing, you know what I mean? And the super cats. Yeah, 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 yeah man, yeah, man, yeah, man. The pinchers and yeah. so forth. But when good record make, it don't matter what artist is there, good, good, good record sell. Good record sell. Yeah, it don't matter if the artist New I'm just going to go to record, sell every time. Now, how did you used to get the actual records? Did you get them shipped from Jamaica? Well, I'm on a, I just send them to Jamaica for it, you know. Funny enough, most people might see me in New York and thing, but most of the men who go on New York and, and Jamaica, I always make them go and bring the record for me. I find it 
and make them eat our food so, as so, well. So, so, so anywhere the records were, <laughs> anywhere the records were, Super Tone find, find it, man. Find in Lal now. So, so if the records were released in New York City, it don't matter. You, you sending someone to yeah, New York for them. Yeah, from New York. And, and what was what would the, an, an average quantity of of records be that you would buy for for say a one reading? Anything from twenty five to a hundred. 150 up to them amount. Would that be one song or one? One record, record if it's good. One if, record if, if, if it's, it's good. A, if it's a top seller, not if it's good. Call record good, right. but if it's a top seller, with the people they want, you could buy it up to 200 record. No, no. How how would you determine that? When is it when someone you keep getting requests for for certain you songs? Just, you just keep in getting requests for certain records. So as soon as you find it, you yeah, buy yeah, it. and people they want it because you didn't have. The internet thing and thing like that. So the record shop was the first place. If you want to hear a record, you have to go to the record shop. That was the mainstream where you get all music. Not like today, right. you can go on the internet. The record shop was first. All sound man, all DJ, the radio, put down this to me, put down that for me. I have a certain customer. You just, when the record come in, you just put it in them bag for them. Now, what, what was good for you? Was the LP the top sellers for you, or was it the 45s? Well, the 45s, I just carry the string, really. That, that is the road. Right? Everybody wants the 45 for you to come first. They help you after. Right. You know what I mean? Because I sold man them like them 45. Because, you know, about so much of the dub dub thing and, and special thing like them. So everybody wants fresh 45. Every, everybody wanted fresh, fresh 45. 45. 45 is what really run the business. <coughs> When you would go shopping, say for instance in Jamaica, where would be your, you know, one of your places that you would get these 45s from? Or whether it would be Dynamics or Dynamics, Sonic, Jewel Gibbs, anywhere with the record. Anywhere the record. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 yeah. Get you, you get some special record with some man who come from Sentence, Trelawney, and up the country. Them not come come sell them wholesale in a record. So you don't wait for them out a tough gang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And you just, so you get the one hour selection, like roots and all them things, you know. Some bridge that come from Sentan, and, and them would have come up and bring on when them come. Boy, I come next week, I just go check him out at the food stall and, and just buy, a, uh, buy, buy out where my buy. Can't go you out of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you get special selection, so you know what I mean? How much would you sell a 45 for? All the pain where you buy it for, really. What three pound, five pounds, seven pounds. At the moment, at the moment is No, back in those days. Back in those days. What? Pound man. Hand one, release. One one pound one pound one pound twenty. One pound twenty for yeah, hand release five. Yeah, yeah man, yeah man. And yeah. out and an album like say a Bob Marley album then at that time. Seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. Yeah, that that kind of sell trading in, style. In, in trading in style, yeah, yeah. No. You've been here for so many years. How far has some of your customers traveled just to come here to buy records from you? All over Europe, man. All over Europe. Yeah, so the man. Europeans also come here. Yeah, to, man. To this buy. is a shop where all know. So Germany, Germany, France. Italy, Australia, and New Zealand. I'm coming from. They come. Just come to straight to Super to buy records from. Me. Wow. Yeah. Who do you think? Which European country has been your biggest supporter over the years? Or is that hard to say? Easy. France. France. Yeah. It's where you saw France most, is of, most, all of, them. most of your records. They was they were the first who into it. Then you have the Italians. At the moment, most of my customers come from Italy. Wow. Yeah. Any Japanese customers? And Japanese, the Japanese too. They come in. They yeah, come but in. from Europe, France, Germany, Italy, Spain. Portugal. Wow. Yeah, man. And they buy a lot of records. Yeah, man. They come from all over Europe and come in and buy records. From me. And we also do a mail order thing too. So. But in, in the early days, you weren't doing mail. No, no. We everyone, don't, we, everyone had to come here. We do, we, yeah, we do a mail order from long, long before internet, man. Oh, you're doing mail order? Yeah, yeah man. Long, long, long time, time, man. Long, long. Uh, during what years would you say, say was the peak of the Supertone record shop? When everything was nice and ripe and the traffic just kept coming in and coming in? I record a sellout. 80, 84, 95. 84 to 95. Yeah. At what point do you start to see a decline? And what was happening at the time, happening at the time when that decline started to take place? The, the, 
declared a start about 97 really. You could feel the dwindling down now, you, you know. You, you, you start ordering records and you see it taking longer to finish. Yes, yeah. Because you, know, you saw the cassette and things like that. So, so you were also selling live cassettes and dance cassettes as well? Or? Yeah, we sell all that. All well. of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Also, were you also cutting dub plates and stuff too? Or you never got part no, of the No, we never really painted the dub plate. No plate studio plate. culture, just straight no. records. We had the other studio upstairs where differently, no one belongs to me, but on the building where See. people from Jamaica and all over come here and cut. Well, a, and that had to complement each other because... Yeah, it was very... Right, <laughs> yes, I was at the centre. Centre of Mixed everything. Stand, since 19... Since 1984, so, so this, this my shop was already the center where people come from all around London and the world to. It's it. Well, it's, yeah, but a good record shop when saying that, you, see, know, you know. See. But what's kind of the road center where when the man them come from the yard and thing now they come. Everybody wants to come. Yeah, to super ask them about super to everybody. Knows. Everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. They know me more, I right, know what I don't travel a lot. I know you must see me in New York, I don't like that, you know. But, but they send man come but buy you record. Send man to buy your record and, and, and stuff. And Jamaica, send a lot of guys buy record. So when it starts mm. to slow down now and you're starting to see the changes, what was the first sign? Take away right, the, the, take away the records not, not selling fast enough, but what was the other signs that you started to see to let you know that the business was declining? At one time we wasn't get getting a lot of vocal and, and the, the DJ thing is good, very good and you have some very great DJ. But I think the, the, the business all, all, up to now always want more vocal into it. That I think that is what keep the business for the longevity of the business. The, the, the DJ thing, okay, one half hot now and deadly but the, but the vocal music is the one, the mainstay of reggae. Uh, uh, I don't forget to say that. That is the mainstay, mainstay with my reggae. experience. With, that with I, your that experience. I, yeah, and yeah. as a record retailer, as you know, you would be able to have a longer lifespan with vocal songs as opposed to DJ songs. Well, vocal all sell, even now. Don't trust me. If you make good vocal, it come out now, it sells. It sells. You get a bigger market, a wider market. So you would rather have more vocal songs to sell than DJ songs? For the longevity of the business. For the longevity the, 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 of the, the business. business. But, you, know, I, I, but you can't stop the DJ thing because the DJ thing was all you did from here ago. But the longevity, the vocal. And, and you say that, um, um, you know, it started to be less vocals coming out of Jamaica. At one at one period, it was it was a lot of that. And, and it starts slowing down. Yeah, it starts slowing down. And, and it, it, it kept dwindling, kept dwindling. Yeah, yeah, how, how, yeah. What do you have to do now to survive? As far as a record, you know, as far as the record business. Because obviously... Well, you well, well, well right, 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 right now, well, the record business is struggling bad. I must say that. That they don't want to call the record business is struggling bad. Not even in England. Or in Jamaica, but worldwide. But you know what caused that? The internet come out and everybody can get the music free. Well, you know what is free? Everybody run for freeness. Right. Because the price of CD have never gone down. If I send to VP, I think for, for a CD, you're talking, the time it come to England, it costs me nearly £10. And the time, you know, you have to put a little overhead for, right. your, for your tax and thing. You're talking that CD value about £12, £13. And then you have to make a profit uh, on it. Yeah, you, you know, um, people don't want to buy because they can go to the market and get some burn one. They right. come from me and buy. They, when we import the seed, they come and buy it from me. I'm gonna burn a hundred and sell. Now if you say that, because I saw the thing around. That's what it, yeah, it's the reality. It, that, yeah, that's it's the reality, reality around. If a man might feel so super told I said that, but it's I said it around. And it's not only the you. top now. Where I buy a new seed, a man run it. You know, give me a 15, 20 pound seed if me want. Because it just want one copy. One copy and then go and then go and then go build a. So it kill the shop. It kills the shop. Yeah. You know. The killer of a shop, and, and and as you said, no one is no one no one really cares that it's it, it's a bootleg CD. They just want to have the music, so if they can get it the cheapest way. Well, that's things what thing, take thing, it. things in life is not easy with nobody at the moment. So anything a man if a man can go down a brick stand and and get three CD for ten for you, you know. I, mean, I like the really good one to wrap up in my paper, but I'm going to buy it still, you know. Maybe I'm all myself to <laughs> talk the truth, you know what I mean? So, so, so what I mean, I really have beat them, I'm going to buy them things, but it killed, 
the natural business. It, it, what uh, keeps you in? Because there's so much record shops here in London that have uh, worldwide that have closed yeah. down their doors. If I can tell you what keeps Super Tony in the business, we have a vast back stock of record from long time. Can we usually buy enough record? If a record is good, we buy a lot and put them down. We just buy record and put on. So after a long, we don't know how long it's gonna last. So we can have a lot of record here, you know, where most shops don't have. Right. So that was my idea. So, Instead so, of putting the money at the bank, what, what, we buy a record buy and record. put it in the shop. <laughs> I keep them in the shop. <laughs> you know. So, so when people are looking for these rare records, they have to come to you. Yeah, you know, most time they come to we are ring us. Yeah, and, 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 and ask you yeah, if you have mm, this song, mm, and, and yeah, that's how you're basically yeah. surviving. I'm basically in the business too. We're not bad, man. None of the record shop, man, the man thing. Because if me not have a record, me sell a man a black of feet or body music. I know I shop. You know, we live that way. And we, because me not have a record, I know you have it. Me I send a man a your shop come by. Right. And you do the same to me. Right. You know, so we, I think we, we are shop man, we live good that way. That job, that Dove Vendor is another good shop man, I think. Wait, Dove, is Dove Vendor still open? Yeah, Dove Vendor is still open, but I think he's more on the, doing the mail order thing now. Doing the mail order. But if you want to interview, I think he's the best man. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge, you know? See it. Yeah, no, black no. at the wall out here, you know? Yeah. Worldwide, so yeah. many record shops have closed down. Yes. In, in, in New York City, Moody's is open, but yeah. a lot of the other stores closed down. Yeah, you yeah. have, um, 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 Superpower that used to be in Brooklyn, yeah, that was man, a yeah. major record Shelley, shop yeah, that you must yeah, know. Yeah. Shelley, they, region, they closed down yeah. in Jamaica. Aquarius record shop was uh, which was also a landmark record shop, yeah, yeah, also closed yeah. down, and the list goes on and on. Yeah. Um, who's supporting you now as far as the mailing thing is going? Where, where, where are you sending records to? Most of it is international and the local, too, because through the, through the traffic and the. In at then most people just you just don't mail order for them anyway. If they live up the road, you know, they rather send if they want us through the one I think then say you send it for them. I see of them to come and park and get a sixty pound ticket because that run away a lot of people from the record the, shop the as parking. well. Um, up to yesterday I have a customer buy about thirty pound a record and my time look out. You know. I was looking at the car every time I read that paper, the ticket man for that car run leave the record on the counter. See. So you know we're going through that kind of liquor. The, the world record industry is going through that kind of business. But you're not giving up. No you're man, I'm a record. <laughs> <laughs> record, record, record music, life. record music, me live by man. See, so, so you're gonna stay with it. No, uh, and, and, and as long as it can last with me, I don't know. Me not, not me not really have nothing else to do. That's the truth. See, you know what I mean. Me, me that me that engineer, engineer work by actually, but me, for me coming a record business. Me just, from me, I do it from Jamaica. Cause I used to be a promoter in Jamaica. Wow. Yeah. You know, cause I used to live at Jonestown. And me know all the artists, them, Bob Marley, Alton, they were always going around and visiting it together. Wow. Yeah. So this was your dream then? To, to have a record shop? And to do, uh, to do what you love? Uh, not really a dream, you know. You just saw the boy like this certain opening and you take it. Take I have the knowledge. Me is a man like that, you know. And you, you do it, you know. Cause, cause don't forget, you know, me that sound system man first, you know. The sound system gave me my shop. So you had a sound system? Super tone. Super tone sound, sound system. system. So, I, was, I was still have it. This all started from a sound system? Yeah, man. Yeah, sound when, system when, gave me everything. Give me when, you know. What year did you start the sound system? Sound system started from 1969. You know, wow. a sound system. We still have it. We call it now the Super Tone Road Show. Still playing and still Yeah, man, play everything, man. Play any music you want. From roots and culture right back to lovers, to anything. Rhythm and blues. Me have, a, me have record personally. Me can't play any segment of record. So, it's not a boss, you know, it's a reality, you know. Could, could, could you be, or would you qualify yourself as a record collector then? You have your own personal stash of. Well, I have all my sound record them from 1969 till now. That you at my house, not that on you would never sell. Those are not records. Well, well, I'll well. leave them. Give me you with them. Still, you know. Let me carry on the business. Cause we can't sell everything, you know. So. Super Tone Record Shop, one of the last surviving famous record shops in the reggae and and dancehall culture worldwide. <laughs> 